Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about curl of a vector field. So let V bar be V1, V2, V3. Okay, be a vector field. So V1, V2, V3, they are some functions of X, Y, Z. So what do you mean by curl of a vector field? Okay, so like you can imagine a magnetic force field or you can assume the flow of a liquid. Okay, so what does curl represent? So it represents that at a given point, how the surrounding vectors will swirl. Okay, that's what you mean by a curl. Or in other words, the curl of a vector field captures the idea about how the field rotates. Okay, so from this meaning, it's clear that when I say that the vectors are not rotating, we will say that such vector fields are irrotational vector fields. That means what? The curl of a vector field is zero. That means when the particles are just flowing straight, they are not rotating around themselves or the neighboring particles are not rotating. That means they are flowing straight. That means we will say that the curl is zero. That means the field is an irrotational vector field. And when the curl is non-zero, we say that the vector field or the magnetic field or the force field is rotational vector field. Okay, so this is one thing. So, okay, we understood the meaning. What do you mean by the curl of a vector field? But then question is, how do you find it? Okay, now that's, that's, that's where the mathematics will come into picture. So, curl of a vector field. So, what will curl do? It will take a vector and it will give you the vector output. Earlier, we have seen another operators like we have seen gradient, Laplacian and divergence. Okay, like for divergence, it takes vector as an input. It gives you scalar as an output. For gradient, it will take a uh, scalar function as an input and it will give you vector as an output. For divergence, it will take vector as an input and it will give you vector as an output. So this is the input vector. Question is, what is the output vector? Well, the output vector is nothing but the determinant i, j, k. The first row is the partial derivatives, deba by deba x, deba by deba by deba by deba z. And this is my v1, v2 and v3. Okay. So like from here, you can connect this with the cross product of two vector. So if my a bar and b bar are two vector, like a bar is a1, a2, a3, b bar is b1, b2, b3. What is a cross b? i, j, k, a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3. So from here you can see, if you recall earlier lecture, what is your nabla? Nabla operator is nothing but the components are nothing but the partial derivatives. Right? So this is nothing but another way to represent curl of a vector field is nothing but it is the cross product of nabla vector with the vector field. So nabla cross V is another notation or representation for a vector field. That is another notation for curl of a vector field. Okay. And now you can see that output is again a vector. So therefore curl takes vector as an input and it gives vector as an output. And one important assumption we make here that this is a continuously differentiable vector field because here we are taking the derivative. So what is this? Our normal i into you take v3 with respect to y minus v2 with respect to z minus j into v3 with respect to x minus v1 with respect to z plus k into v2 with respect to x minus v1 with respect to y. So that's what the curl is. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, another thing like physicists usually take care of the things like when you are in right hand Cartesian coordinate system. So this is my i, j, my k is upright when I go like this, i, j, k. But when I'm in left hand, when I'm go, going from here to here, i, j, my k will come down. Okay, so i, j, k with right hand, with left hand, i j k comes down right so for left hand cartesian system if this is my i this is my j then here you have k vector so when you are playing with left hand coordinate system we put usually a minus sign over here okay but that's just an observation that one should know we put plus sign for right hand coordinate cartesian system and minus sign for left hand cartesian system in x y z another important thing now curl of a vector so this output is again a vector so obviously a vector has a magnitude and direction so what does the direction represent direction represents the axis of maximum rotation and the magnitude represents that by how much magnitude it will rotate okay so that's the another geometrical interpretation of 
curl of a vector. Now let me take one example. Now suppose this is a vector field given to you and I want to find the curl of this vector. So this curl of V ijk first order partial derivatives in the vector field y raised to n second component and the third component. So what is the curl i into this with respect to y so x raised to n with respect to y is 0 minus z raised to n with respect to z n z raised to n minus 1 minus j into x raised to n with respect to x is n x raised to n minus 1 z y raised to n with respect to z is 0 plus k into z raised to n with respect to x is 0 minus y raised to n with respect to y is this. So the output is nothing but minus n z raised to n minus 1 minus n x raised to n minus 1 minus n y raised to n minus 1. So this is the curl of the given vector field. Now let's try to see some important properties. So see finding curl is easy. But now there are couple of important properties that one should know when they are playing with curl of a vector field. So here is the first property. It says that if you have a continuously differentiable vector field, that means its components are continuously differentiable and it is conservative. That means what your vector field is grad of a scalar function. So if f is a scalar function, its gradient is a vector, right? So this is vector, this is vector. Then the curl of f is always zero. That means curl of grad of a scalar valued function is always zero. Okay, so I have realized that when we ask students directly this question, they directly prove this, they get the two marks. But if something like this is given, they get confused and they are not able to prove. The only trick here is instead of explicitly mentioning grad f, we say that f is conservative. But f is conservative means what? f is grad f. So here, instead of capital F, grad f will come. Okay, so what is grad f? It is nothing but f with respect to x, f with respect to y, f with respect to z. What is this? This is my capital F that is given to me. Now f is continuously differentiable. That means this first order derivatives are differentiable. That means their second derivative also exists. Okay, that means you can say that your f is twice differentiable. Okay, now in this scenario, now you find its curl, curl of grad f. That means nabla cross nabla f. What is this? I, j, k, deba by deba x, deba by deba y, deba by deba z. Here f with respect to x, f with respect to y, f with respect to z. Okay, so this is what we get. Now here, when you try to find the curl, your answer will come out to be zero because we are going to use one nice theorem. What is that theorem? Now here i into here fz with respect to y. So fz with respect to y minus fy with respect to z minus j into fz with respect to x minus fx with respect to z plus k into fy with respect to x minus fx with respect to y. Now since your f small f is twice differentiable, therefore there is a theorem called as a mixed derivative theorem which says you differentiate in any order, you always get the same answer. Therefore these two things are same, these two things are same, these two things are same. So 0 into y plus 0 into j plus 0 into k which is 0 bar. And therefore, nabla cross nabla f is always zero, where your small f is twice continuously differentiable function. Okay, so this is one important result that one should know. The second involves divergence. Divergence of curl of v bar is zero. Now here I am not writing zero bar. This is a number, right? This is a zero function. Earlier case it was a zero vector because divergence gives you a scalar function as an output. So if your v bar is twice continuously differentiable function, then if you take its curl and divergence, your answer will be zero. Why that is the case? This is what divergence means what? Nabla dot nabla cross v. Divergence of curl of v. Okay. What is this? Nabla dot. What is this? This is i into my v bar is say v1, v2, v3. So what is this? v1, v2, v3. So my v3 
विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई माइनस वी टू वी टू विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड राइट देन माइनस जे यू टेक वी थ्री विथ एक्स वी थ्री विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स माइनस वी वन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड प्लस के इन टू यू टेक वी टू विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स माइनस वी वन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई ना वाई टेक दिस डायवर्जेंस मीन्स फर्स्ट कंपोनेंट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स प्लस सेकेंड कंपोनेंट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई प्लस थर्ड कंपोनेंट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड सो दिस विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स मीन्स वी थ्री विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई एक्स माइनस वी टू विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड एक्स माइनस द सेकेंड कंपोनेंट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई वी थ्री विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स वाई प्लस वी वन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड वाई एंड दिस विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड वी टू एक्स जेड माइनस वी वन वाई जेड बट वी टू इज अगेन अ कंटिन्यूसली डिफरेंशियबल फंक्शन सो इधर यू डिफरेंशियट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स एंड देन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड इज सेम एज यू फर्स्ट डिफरेंशियट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड वेन दर इज विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स सो दिस गोज अवे सिमिलरली दिस गोज अवे एंड दिस गोज अवे सो आंसर इज जीरो सो डायवर्जेंस ऑफ कर्ल ऑफ वी इज ऑलवेज अ जीरो फंक्शन ओके सो दिस इज अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट रिजल्ट द थर्ड इम्पॉर्टेंट इज क्वाइट सिंपल विच आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू प्रूव इट सेज कर्ल ऑफ एडिशन ऑफ टू वैक्टर्स इज नथिंग बट कर्ल ऑफ यू प्लस कर्ल ऑफ वी सो यू टेक यू बार एज यू वन यू टू यू थ्री वी बार एज वी वन वी टू वी थ्री वॉट इज यू प्लस वी यू वन वी वन कॉमा यू टू वी टू कॉमा यू थ्री वी थ्री यू फाइंड इट्स कर्ल you find curl of u curl of v then add you get the same answer okay next property is curl of alpha into v bar is alpha into curl of v bar because if v bar is v1 v2 v3 what is alpha v bar alpha v1 alpha v2 alpha v3 so when you find this curl i j k double by double x double by double y double by double z alpha v1 alpha v2 alpha v3 by property of determinant this alpha will come outside so therefore you will only have alpha into curl of v and when last result this i have proved in my earlier lecture you can have a look it says that divergence of u cross v is nothing but v dot curl u minus u dot curl v so curl v is a vector and uh, here you take the dot product with v curl v is a vector take a dot product with u okay so this i have proved in my earlier lecture so link you can find in the description so i hope this is clear thank you